how do you see Dayton improving or getting worse in the mm. next 10 years? See, there are a lot of young guys who follow me, even older mm. guys, and they're hoping for a breakthrough. Like, is this, this yes. thing, are things going to get easier or harder mm. in the next 10 years? What do you think? Um, I... It, I'm, I'm going to say a little of both, to be honest with you. I think the guys who are savvy when it comes to like game and understanding, that's one of the reasons I re- wrote the fifth book, by the way, um, is understanding that dating going forward into the 21st century. You got to remember, we're, tw- well, we're, we're 21 years into the 21st century right now. Right. And we have to stop. If you want to be successful in the sexual marketplace, you have to stop thinking in terms of like o- what I call old order thinking. It's 20th century thinking. And so like when I'll go on these podcasts with like uh, Patrick Bet David or I'll go on with Adam Sosnick or I'll go on like some more conservative kind of channels. Um, the one thing that I'm always really sort of acutely aware of is that the people that I'm talking to still have this ideal of like marriage and family and all this stuff that's based on 20th century, like hopes and dreams and ideals and everything, rather than saying, you know, maybe we live in a post-marriage society and we need to start, you know, thinking of ways to adapt to that if you want to have that. It's not that you can't have that. It's just the way and the means to get to that is no longer the same way that it used to be. We're not like going out on dates and let's go out to dinner and let's go Dutch and you pay and I'll pay. And buy. like, where do we go? I don't know. Where do you want to go? All that is out the window in the Instagram age, right? It's like, I'll meet you at the club. And if you're not there, fine. There's another dude who's there and he's got a blue check mark too. So right. but, um, you, said, you said something interesting that caught my attention. You said a post-marriage Mm-hmm. Post what, do you, what do you mean by that? What do you I'm mean actually that? stealing that line, by the way. Uh, so if Aaron Clary is watching, Aaron Clary actually brought that up. And I don't know if you're familiar with Aaron, but he's a good friend of mine. He's on the Rule Zero crew with the, with me and the rest of the guys. And he's got it. He actually has a new book that's coming out that's going to be really great. Um, but I uh, I got an advanced copy of it. And one of the things he talks about, I think it might be a full chapter there. Uh, he talks about how we're living in a post-marriage world right now. And how marriage is, and I, like, and that's hard for me to say because I've been married for you know twenty and twenty five and a half years now, and so it's like for me to like even talk about marriage going forward sounds like I'm like shitting on marriage, and I'm not. I'm just saying you need to be aware of of what's going on in the way that we do marriage right now, right. but we don't do it like we used to. We don't do it like we did prior to year two thousand. And um, I think we still want to get back to that. We want to get back to that romanticized 20th century, oh, mommy, daddy, two kids and a you know, golden retriever in the front yard. Um, that's what we're still, we, we have in our head, but we don't realize that now to even get to that, we have to go to the clubs and we got to be an Instagram and we got to do all this. We got to be brand managers of ourselves to actually get to that point to even to initiate a, a relationship in the first place. So if you look at like the stats right now, if you look at how men and women meet um, and you look how like they've met in the past versus how they meet right now, um, like it used to be people would meet through church, they would meet through school, they would meet through work, they would meet through friends, they would meet through, you know, whatever else. And then there is meet online. And since uh, about year 2000, that has just shot straight up. That's the number one way that, that, that couples meet each other is online. And how do they do that? Well, like I said before, it used to be okay, Cupid. It used to be like, let's type in and have a, a dating profile kind of thing. And now it's swipe left or swipe right. So what does that do to a society? And it's going to change, fundamentally change how we view marriage going forward. Right now, our, our marriage rates are, I, believe, I, I just saw this too. I was wrong about this. I actually thought it was like higher, but marriage rates right now are at 5.1 per 1,000 people in the United States. It's the lowest it has ever been since they record, started recording back in like the 1800s, right? Wow. And so that to me says there's something, the, the, we're changing the way that we think about marriage. Mm-hmm. And how we go about it. So you start hearing things like poly and you start hearing like, oh, equal partnerships. And, you know, when you look at how women are making more money than men these days or they're, uh, they're more, there's more college enrollment, at least it's in the United States anyway, but in Western countries as well. Yeah. Um, that is going to change, fundamentally change the dynamic or the ideal of marriage that we still have in our head from the 20th century. So that's why I say we're, we're and I agree with, with Aaron here, is that we live in a post-marriage society and we're still figuring out what we're going to do. I had Adam Sosnick ask me about that too. He says, well, what do we go? What are we going to do with the, about all this? I go, I don't know, but we're figuring it out as we go along here and we better like, you know, come up with something as, as we move, move forward. Now, right. 
I, I hate this because like everybody say, well, what about delusional women and, and you know, their entitlements and, and, and marriage? It sounds like it's all bad news. It's not, it's not bad news. It's only bad news if you don't know how to leverage it. It's only bad news if you don't know what, like, what do you want out of your life? Most guys don't even ask themselves, like, where do I want to be? What do I want to have going forward? Do I want to get married? Do I, do I want to have kids? I have a lot of guys who will say, like, I have a lot of, I want to have kids, but I don't want to get married because it's too dangerous and I don't want to lose half my stuff or I don't want to get you know, wrapped up in that. And women, on the other hand, say, I can't find a guy who's economically attractive. I can't find anybody that I really want to get with because I have all these choices and none of them are, you know, I got, uh, what is it, uh, um, you know, 100,000 cable channels to watch and I don't care for any of them except for like one or two. Exactly. 